Let's go on. You can also delete many rows at the same time. As in this example, I'm going to delete all the rows from my supporting act table because I don't have a filtering where clause at all. So let's go and run this query. I'm going to delete more than one row at once. I'm actually going to delete all the rows from the supporting act table. I deleted 13 rows. As you can see, I actually rolled it back because I don't really want to delete my supporting act table. I just want to demonstrate that it can be done. Now let's get to the truncate command. Once again, I'll remind you, you cannot roll back with the truncate command. Once you execute truncate, the data that you've deleted has disappeared and is irretrievable. Well, that's not strictly true because you could retrieve using backups. But you can't retrieve using regular transactional controls using the rollback command in SQL. Any other types of retrieval are really database administrator oriented and you really need to ask a DBA to help you out with that. So, this is why I go through this process demonstrating the truncate command. What I'm doing is I'm creating a temporary table and copying all the supporting act data into the temporary table. I truncate the supporting act table thereby destroying the data in the table. I do not destroy the structure with the truncate command. The truncate command is really a version of both a delete command with no where clause or a drop table command. The advantage of truncate over drop table is that I don't lose the structure. Also, I don't get conflict with primary and foreign keys. Although I can potentially get referential integrity problems if I'm trying to remove data that has child rows. Then I'm going to verify that the supporting act table is empty and then I'm going to reinsert the data from the temporary table I created with this command back into the supporting act table and I'm going to drop the temporary table. So first of all, let's go and create my temporary table and that's done. Then I'll truncate the supporting act table and now I'm going to select the data from the supporting act table. First of all, let's try a rollback. The data is not there. It's been destroyed. The rollback didn't work. So now I'm going to rebuild my supporting act table again by simply reinserting the data back in from the temp table. And I'm going to select the data from supporting act again. It's back in the proper table. And then I'm going to drop that temporary table. So let's execute a rollback here and show you something interesting. Let's go and select all my data from my supporting act table again. What do I get? The data's all there even though I rolled it back. I didn't actually execute a commit command. What happened was the drop table command is actually a DDL command. If you remember I told you earlier, all DDL commands automatically execute a commit. So at this stage, the data that I inserted from the temp table back into supporting act actually committed that supporting act data. Remember, DDL commands execute automatic commits, DMR commands do not. Let's go back to the truncate command. To reiterate, truncate does no rollback. It also does no logging. It is not undoable, whereas the delete command is. The delete statement syntax is quite simply delete from table with a potential filtering clause. And once again, as with insert and update, a returning clause. The truncate statement syntax is very simple. Truncate the table with the table name.